This is the Sigma Art 85mm 1.4 lens. It is the biggest, heaviest, and the sharpest lenses I own. Let me explain. All right, so the first thing you notice once you pick this thing up, it is heavy. It's almost two kilograms. If I would throw this at someone, I could easily kill them. And yeah, this thing is as big as two lenses combined. Now, one of the reasons is that uh, this is actually made for full frame cameras. And as you guys know, we're using Sony Alpha 6500 cameras, but we're planning to switch later on to possibly Sony uh, a7 IV, so for now this is a really good investment and so far I just love it. This lens is great. I'm gonna just show you a couple of samples taken with this lens. It is insane and even if you sometimes go on 1080p, sometimes it's almost hard to differentiate if it's 4k or 1080p. It is that sharp. It's crazy and that glass, that glass is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, it's 86 millimeters in diameter. So ND filters, which I actually am thinking of buying one, they're gonna run pretty expensive because the size is that big. So all in all, the construction of this lens is a solid 10 out of 10. It's built like a tank. I wish it was a little bit smaller and a little bit uh, lighter, which is by far one of the, the only compliments I have because when I'm traveling, and I'm usually traveling with my backpack only, space, the weight and size is crucial. But yeah, what is this lens for? What can you shoot with this? There are actually a lot of applications for it. And yeah, it's only 85 millimeters, it's fixed, it's a prime lens. But I would say this lens is for capturing emotions. You can really focus on like one person and just blur everything else with that f1.4 aperture, which is just, mm. But yeah, there are also a lot of other applications for this. I have used this for landscape time lapses, gonna show you some that look pretty good, but that works if you're like really far away from the subject. One thing I also love about this lens is the focus ring. I'm not sure if it's really focused by wire because it doesn't have a far, it doesn't have a hard stop, but it has a little click. Once you go to like one end, it clicks. And there again, so you can kind of actually feel it. It also has this little screen, which basically tells you how far are you like focused and everything. Also has a little button here to switch manual and autofocus. Super handy. I love that. I love just that I can do this on the fly without without removing my eye from the viewfinder or from the monitor and going into menus. You know, that takes a couple of extra seconds, but sometimes it's just more convenient to have this. This lens also works surprisingly well for stuff like product photography. And literally, if it's just like one object that you want to focus on, I always go for this lens because it can really draw all the attention to that thing by blurring like everything else and just leaving that one thing in frame. And sometimes that looks really well. Now you gotta understand that not every scene has to have a bokeh, that's for sure. If you're filming like multiple people, like two or three, this lens is really not the best because you have to move like really far away. And with that f1.4 or even like f2.8, it's sometimes hard to nail the focus on like multiple persons. For example, you would be filming me with the f1.4 aperture and I would be like this. Probably, me, probably this eye wouldn't be in focus because the depth of field is that shallow on this thing. Now I'm sure you guys want to ask how is that autofocus on this lens because it is not a Sony lens, it's a Sigma lens. And I can clearly say the autofocus is great. If you're filming one subject, you're not going to lose focus. It's really easy, the autofocus doesn't haunt or anything, it's great. When it, but when it comes shooting through something like uh, twigs, some branches, you know, obviously the autofocus is not going to work as good. I think the Sony lens is focused a little bit quicker, just a tiny bit. You probably won't even notice unless you compare it. But I've used this lens for almost a half a year now and I love it. The autofocus is great, but yeah, I haven't noticed any problems with it. It's great. It has like um, maybe like 90% hit rate. It's good. It's great. And remember, even if the autofocus doesn't work, the manual focus is always a pleasure to use because of that big focus ring and you can really like make some small adjustments. It's great. And the other question we probably have is, can you mount this on a gimbal? Well, we attempted to mount it on the Xeon Crane 2 and surprisingly somehow we managed to balance it, but it is really not practical. It's just not. Because the lens is so heavy and also the fact that we're using a crop sensor, it's really not 85 millimeters, it's more like it's something like 115 millimeters, so it's really zoomed in, and that means you, you can't really do any like orbit shots because it's so zoomed in, all the little jitters are visible, and like you gotta be super, super precise. 
it's just not practical. And remember guys, there's also a term that's called too much gimbal work. Not every shot has to have some sort of a movement. And I think this is what a lot of beginners don't realize. That they watch these super cool videos and they all have these reveal shots. And yeah, those are cool, but sometimes it's better to just leave the camera on a tripod and don't do anything. Just let the video, the, the thing that's happening speak for itself. I'm just saying that not every scene has to have a movement. You need to know when to move in the camera and when to just leave it still. And this lens is more meant for just, uh, for just that. And pretty much there are like two ways how you can use this lens. One is obviously on a tripod or a monopod. And the second one is handheld. Now a strap definitely helps because you can create like three points of contact and you can actually get some stable shots handheld. Seems stable. <laughs> but again, don't you don't really need to move or anything. But the best way to shoot this, if you don't have a tripod, is to like sit sit down on the floor and then put the camera on your knee and use that as a tripod. For me, it sounds weird, but it actually works, and uh, that is sort of the best way I have to do it. But the real question is, should you buy this lens? I would say, yeah, this is a great lens. Yeah, it's a little bit pricey. It's right in between the G Master and the Sony AD 5mm 1.8. It's right around $1,000, so it's not on the cheap side. But this is an art series lens, so you get what you pay for. It's just crazy sharp, the quality is good, the bokeh is good. The footage that comes out of the thing is great, no doubt about that, it's just insane. But if you're traveling, traveling a lot, and if space is crucial to you, I would advise to going for something smaller. Like I said, the Sony uh, 85mm 1.8 is a good choice and it's also half of the price of this thing. Or if you're on a crop and you're planning to stay on the crop sensor camera, then get the uh, Sigma 56mm 1.4. It's designed for crop. It is super small and still. The quality that comes out of that thing is probably insane. It's usually with Sigma. Sigma lenses are dope. It's not just about the quality. The color science is also different. If you, if you compare Sony and Sigma, Sigma's, Sigma's colors are like a little bit warmer and greenish and I, just, I can't really explain. You gotta, you gotta compare this to yourselves, but we, we really love the color science of Sigma. And, uh, and I would love all my lenses to be Sigma. Please Sigma, release some zoom lenses. Finally, we want some. Actually, the one upside of this lens being so big, you know the situations when you walk into a gig and for example, you have a Sony crop camera and then like a 30 mil lens, it looks like a toy. Sometimes I actually was asked like, wow, your camera's like really small. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, the, the, it's the new generation. So sometimes I tend to walk in with this lens so it looks like big, because people like big things, <laughs> obviously. And then sort of, even though I don't need this, I switch it on and then, I take it off and put the lens I'm actually wanting to shoot. But yeah, I'm really glad that this thing got into my arsenal. It's a beast and you definitely should try it out. It's insane. Sigma lenses are dope. So yeah guys, that sort of wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more lens videos, hit us up. Let us know. We have a lot of lenses. I'm gonna review them all or whatever. But anyway, a lot of cool content coming soon. And uh, well, if you're interested, leave a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Peace!